Hello, dear friends. If you tell the universe, I love my enemies, the universe will kindly listen and send you more enemies, so you can continue loving them. The best appreciation is indifference, blessing everyone and letting each person follow their own path without anger or resentment. Opinion piece. Mars project. Challenges. Artificial happiness. A struggle for resources. Musk's proposals for Mars. The Federation advises humanity. Let's start. Elon Musk's CEO of SpaceX has reiterated on multiple occasions his ambitious plan to send humans to Mars using the powerful Starship spacecraft system. His vision is not limited to the journey, as once on the red planet, the magnate plans to begin construction of a self-sufficient city. According to his estimates, such a scenario could become a reality within about 20 years. Elon Musk's Mars project aims to begin and create launches in 2026, human missions around 2028, and the long-term construction of a self-sustaining Martian city all in order to safeguard humanity's interplanetary survival. The plan is structured in several phases, starting with uncrewed test missions starting in 2026 using the Starship spacecraft and with the goal of sending the first humans around 2028. In this first phase, SpaceX plans to launch at least five uncrewed starships to validate the technology and the ability to land safely on Mars. If these flights are successful, the next step will be crewed missions, which could occur about two years later. The project ambitions the establishment of a self-sustaining colony, capable of sustaining itself without constant assistance from F. Musk assumes this will require a significant amount of hardware. His vision involves sending hundreds or even thousands of starships to Mars in the coming decades, with the goal of reaching a population of up to 1 million people in 20 or 30 years. Musk argues that colonizing Mars would act as life insurance for humanity against existential threats, such as geological catastrophes, wars, or the eventual destruction of life on Earth due to the aging of the Sun. Regarding the, govern the governance of the future colony, Musk proposes a simple direct democracy in which colonists vote on laws with short text to avoid legal ambiguities. He believes this model of government would allow for greater agility and transparency in decision making. Opinions a dystopian NASA astrophysicist suggests that technologies like Neuralink could be used on Mars to stimulate certain areas of the brain to create artificial happiness. Faced with this, Vyacheslav Turishev, a researcher at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, explained in a recent interview 
the challenges that future Martian inhabitants will face, accepting that humans will bring with them the flaws and contradictions of earthly civilization when establishing a new society. Turichev points out that initially the colony could be made up of a close knit of a close knit group, united but by a common goal and the novelty of what is happening at that time. However, he warns that the hierarchy of needs described in Maslow's pyramid will later manifest itself. He recalls that humans need to eat, drink, breathe and eventually reproduce. Resources will be scarce, he emphasizes stressing that this will initiate a struggle for them. On the other hand, the scientist mentions that everything could be relatively simple in the first generation of humans on the red planet, since the hostile environment will require competent leadership to keep this small Martian society united and motivated. However, he points out that doubts will later begin to arise when trying to justify the purpose of life to the descendants of the first group, and that the first generations may experience a kind of melancholy for a lost paradise, F. It will take several generations before these people find that they came to Mars to find, he adds. Currently, it takes about four hours to return to Earth from the International Space Station and from the Moon. The journey could, would, would take just a day and a half. However, the astrophysicist emphasizes that once you reach Mars, you reach Mars, there's no turning back, explaining that from there our planet looks like a star. He also details that some passengers on board the spacecraft may regret looking out the hatch and seeing us drifting away. Even though the situation could improve at some point, to reshave questions where happiness and love will be found, arguing that it's not just about survival, but also about having moments of joy. In an attempt to find a solution to this question, he suggests that technologies such as Neuralink could be used to stimulate certain areas of the brain to create artificial happiness. However, he believes it's unlikely that this device could provide a true sense of peace and tranquility. Finally, the scientist shows some, some optimism, saying that happiness and love could be developed at the genetic level as part of an evolutionary necessity. Although this path will be long and difficult, I'm sure that we will see the true joy of being flourish and the beginning of a new era for humankind, he states. Revelation. Dr. Michael Sala suggests that the Galactic Federation is advising humanity not to manifest nightmares in an evolving 5D galaxy, guiding us toward a more harmonious future. This revelation stems from the so-called Swaru material, an independent and original set of extraterrestrial communications that began to emerge in 2017-18. The origin of this information lies with two UFO researchers, Robert and Gosia. They began receiving messages from a young Tajetan extraterrestrial woman, 
named Suaru, who recited about an Andromeda mothership. These messages, transmitted electronically to Earth, offered unprecedented information on a wide variety of topics, particularly the workings and philosophy of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Subsequently, other members of her Tachetan family joined Suaru in these communications, collectively enriching the material. According to the Suaru material, a significant change has occurred. Regressive extraterrestrial races have largely abandoned our solar system, leaving the management of Earth under the jurisdiction of the Galactic Federation. However, the Tajetan community, including Suaru, has expressed clear disagreements with the Galactic Federation leaders. Their main points of contention revolve around the specific methods of Earth governance and, crucially, the timeline for full disclosure of extraterrestrial life to the human population and the full integration of humanity into the galactic community. Suarez's information occupies a prominent place in the chronology of political disclosure. It predates the emergence of other prominent communicators such as Elena Danan and Megan Rose, who began sharing detailed information about the Galactic Federation of Worlds in early and mid-2021. This chronological present, present underscores the originality and potential for independent verification of what Sparrow and her fellow Tajetans shared about the Galactic Federation's structure, goals and functions. Their insights remain highly relevant for understanding Earth's current situation and anticipating future galactic interactions. A key example of the unique contribution of Suarez's material in her detailed exposition of the Prime Directive, Dr. Sala, Dr. Sala's anal analysis highlights two early communications between Gosia and Suaru on this very topic. The first of these communications, published on September 29th, 2018, detailed the Prime Directive. Suaru Gosia described it as the primordial law abided by all extraterrestrial races in the galaxy. This directive, vital to maintaining a galactic order, encompasses ten fundamental principles that guide the actions and goals of all external civilizations, with explicit mention of its utterance by the Galactic Federation. What is noteworthy and the topic of considerable debate in exopolitical circles is that nearly three years after Suaru first revealed these principles, Elena Danan published what appeared to be the same ten principles on September 6th. 2021. Although Dana's version featured a slightly different order and minor textual modifications, it was presented without attribution of a, or acknowledgement of Suarez's earlier version. This act of appropriation and reorganization, which presents Suarez's original prime directive as something developed and strictly followed by the Galactic Federation of Worlds and codified as primordial or galactic natural law, raises intriguing questions. The motivations behind this and its possible connection to the concept of the Prime Directive in, Jean's, in Jean Roddenberry's Star Trek series will be the subject of future exopolitical analysis. Understanding the current situation of Earth 
and the role of the Galactic Federation requires a return to the original source. The Prime Directive, as Suaru initially communicated it to Kosia and Robert in 2018, remains the fundamental vision for the overall goals and activities of the Galactic Federation and other races actively interacting with humanity. It reveals a sophisticated universal framework designed to ensure balanced development and guide emerging civilizations like ours, helping them avoid manifesting nightmares in the evolving reality of our 5D galaxy. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friend. Thanks a lot, my friends. <laughs>